What's up? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, we're going to go over some speed drills for baseball. And so obviously speed training is huge if you want to improve your 60 yard dash time, if you want to get faster and get below that 7.0 mark uh, that, you know, college scouts and pro scouts are really looking for, you know, whether you can play the outfield or play the infield at the next level. So in today's video, some really great speed drills that you can start using today. All right, so before we get going, be sure to check out the links in the description below. You'll find sample chapters to my new book called Clean Your Cleats. So if you're a serious ball player or a parent or coach, and you really wanna know how can my son get as far as he wants to in baseball, or if you wanna say, hey, how can I really reach all those big dreams that I have? My book's gonna really help you get there. So check out the links in the description below. You can listen to a free cha sample chapter and check it out. All right. so. In today's video, speed drills for baseball. I'm gonna give you four great drills you can do anywhere. And I'm gonna talk about a little bit about the different concepts that they all teach and what's really, really important for baseball. So let's start with number one. The first thing that's really important, especially with younger players, is low body angle. So the only time you're gonna be standing up, straight up and down, is when you're jogging or you're at full speed, like you're really far along on like a 100 meter sprint, you're in like the 50th plus yard. Um, even in Olympic sprinters, they're low body angle indoors for like 40, sometimes up to 50 yards because they're still accelerating. And the, the reason for this is that when you're at a low body angle, you're pushing the ground behind you, which pushes you forward. It's a critical thing to understand. So for most players, getting faster is also about staying lower when they sprint. So this first drill that we're going to cover, the sideways hop back, helps to teach that low body angle. So the sideways hop back is working on turning the hips and being really reactive. So as soon as the toes touch down, your athlete wants to be taking off as fast as they can go. So you're turning your hips 90 degrees. So they're gonna turn all the way in the air. And that's part of it too. And then the goal is to get, again, rock it off the ground, have as minimal ground contact time as possible. And the feet should split while in the air. All right, so this next drill is the forward or the reverse hop back. And this is very, very similar to the sideways hop back. And it's also teaching that low body angle. But both of these drills also teach reactivity. So as soon as those feet split in the air and they touch down, your goal is to be shooting off and going just like the ground's hot lava. So reactivity is the second big thing um, that sprinters need. And that is you can't be like a dump truck where yeah, you have a really powerful engine, but it's really slow to get going, right? You want to be more like a Ferrari or a Tesla nowadays, where as soon as you hit the gas, all of your force gets applied to the road. So that's sort of what reactivity is. Obviously, that's also something built in the, in the weight room with strength training and things like plyometrics and all that. But obviously, having some drills like these two hop back versions um, are good for building reactivity. Keys to the forward hop back you should actually move backwards. So not just splitting, splitting your feet in, uh, in place. Should the, the player should actually jump back and get some ground going rearward, rearward, and then the feet should split. So you're landing in that split stance position that creates that low body angle and helps build reactivity. So again, as soon as the feet touch down, the athlete's taking off and sprinting. All right, this next drill is called the kneeling start. And this one focuses on sort of like the cheek to cheek arm swing. So your arm swing is really important. You don't want to be too, too much side by side. And this one is good. You start on a knee and you get going and it kind of reinforces a lot of the good arm swing technique that you want to be working on as part of your practice. And I'll give you a bonus um, arm swing drill at the end of this video. That's really important, especially for younger players to start working on, you know, getting those arms going in the right direction because ultimately we don't want to be losing and leaking power side to side with you know really crazy side to side arms we want to be moving forward and back with our arm swings in a pretty compact method um, so that we're directing ourselves to the place we want to run to so this next drill is called the kneeling start so the kneeling start teaches players to get a strong initial drive and to turn their hips directly in the direction that they want to go this is a common problem with younger players so it's a great drill for getting that initial first step to be really hard as the hips turn, which is common on the base paths and in the field. 
All right, and this last sprint drill is kind of a fun one. This one's called the crab start. And the crab start is really important because a lot of players, and this is very baseball specific, they don't get their hips and their belly button turned directly to where they're running, especially with balls hit over their shoulder. So it's not good enough to just be a good sprinter, you know, when you're standing off the line, like you're stealing second base, that's relatively easy to have better running form. But you also want to have good running form when you're in the infield trying to get a beat on a fly ball over your head or a blooper over the infield. That stuff is harder and it requires you, uh, any athlete, getting your hips turned in the direction of the baseball, not just running sideways or not having these slow sort of like banana routes to the ball. And that stuff is, is something that you definitely need to train as a coach and as a player. So the crab start really forces athletes to get their hips and again, their belly button and their hip bones turned as fast as they can. It's a really good kind of fun drill for teaching that. So let's check out the crab start. So the crab start teaches players to get their hips turned in the direction that they're going as fast as they can. So you'll see on the second one, how I kind of have a little bit of a banana. So I go out to the other side and then my roots, not as straight. That's common. And so this one teaches players to get their hips turned before they start sprinting in their new direction. So as you can see, that's a drill that's going to help you, um, again, get going in the fastest, most direct route to balls. So when you watch an MLB outfielder, you watch an MLB infielder, they're not wasting steps going a little bit to the left, and then they finally get on a, a good straight path towards the ball. They're very quickly getting their hips turned and they're running with their head down for usually a couple strides. They're not just staring at the ball because when wherever your eyes go, your hips and uh, your your center of your mass is also tends to go. So this is a really good drill. I highly recommend integrating that one into practice. So as promised, uh, I'm going to give you a quick uh, arm swing progression. That's great to do as part of a warm up, gets your whole body warm and also continues to reinforce good sprinting habits. This is something you could do every day as part of your own routine at home for you players. Or for coaches, this could be one of the first things that you do before practice, before your sprint and agility training. All right, so why do dual arm? Well, because it's easier to get the motion down. You're not worried about the cadence of it, the timing of it, the alternating uh, nature of it. Both arms, you're just going to drive those elbows back and work on thumb, you know, thumb to collarbone, cheek to cheek, and increasing your pace. And square uh, feet is the simplest way to keep your feet. So this is the most basic, fundamental arm swing drill. All right, so again, square stance is the simplest stance as less core demand, less rotational component, and then obviously alternating arms are going to introduce a little more variability for young athletes. So this is going to be a little more complicated, uh, but still just part of the progression for teaching good arm swings. All right, so that's going to do it. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to the channel, share this with a friend. You can also check in the description below. I have a full speed and agility workout program. So if you want a, a made for you, done, fully programmed sprint and agility program that you can give to your team that for you as a coach, you can implement right away. Check out the links in the description below. You'll find that because, um, again, I know coaches are busy people. So that's exactly what I would do for my team uh, for all their sprint training, not only getting faster, but also agility. So there's tons of cone drills and all that stuff in there as well. So if you're interested, check that out in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you here in the next video.